Check out thechosenprime.com in the link in the description below for this and other great items. Alright everyone, welcome to another Radio Free Cybertron review. I'm your host, Diecast, and today we have the Ocular Max Sphinx, the PS-01 Espionage, and something that I can't read. So let's take a quick look at the box. As you can see, nice picture on the top, or the front, robot and vehicle mode on the top, nice picture of Mirage on the side, picture of his transformation on the back, along with the G1-esque tech specs, where you need those glasses that no one ever has to read the specs. Um, on the back some warnings ages 15 and up and then inside the box it also is the perfection series inside the box you have the nice clamshell packaging and then you have your instructions which tell you what pieces go where and also on the back here you have design AK Sculpt Griffith Jezelin B Packaging Ch Chigo King and then some s photography and powered by Mastermind Creations which is also similar to what you get when you open up the box I only opened up one of the ends but you get the same sort of uh, credits there, which is which is neat. Uh, it's neat that they they did that. It gives us kind of an idea who's doing what, if they're going to keep this up or not. I don't know. And there's a QR code if you want to if you want to scan that. It takes you to OcularMax.com. So I thought that was interesting. Also, you have the collector's card, which is it's very thin. It's a it's a very thin thin collector's card, but you got your tech specs, the bio, if you want to read that, and then a nice picture of Sphinx. And then as you can see, this is the parachute. It does not come in the box. Mine is a little squashed. Uh, the box was just a little too small for both of it, but. You open it up and there's your parachute. So get that out. And another head. There oh wow. There's another head in there too. The first time I opened the parachute, so looks like we have three heads total. These are the two. And then this piece is an extra back of the head, just in case you don't want the uh, letters right here. The letters, the tans, goo year. Um, that'll be cleaned off, and you'll basically have that. And it might, might, uh, it might be a nice spot to put an Autobot logo which I think is why they did that, because people were complaining because of everything on here. There's really no place to put an Autobot logo. So, and then let's look at the parachute real quick. It is a nice, thick, translucent uh, material with metal wires and these little caps, which will clip into his hands, and he can hold that and ride down and you can see if you want him to just hold that he can uh, you're just probably going to want to shape this a little bit to get that nice parachute shape shape that you want so let's go ahead and he does have three heads again these are the two heads I think I like this head the most but unfortunately on this head there is a little bit of paint defect um, going over the whole figure the paint in a couple places could have been a little bit better um, but a lot of it's really nice too so it's really confusing the silver paint seems to be the worst 
on mine the uh, the paint's a little scuffed up or there looks like there was dirt in the paint when it was sprayed or painted on or however they do the paint for these guys and then uh, probably this inner edge right up here they could have put a little bit more blue on that I'm gonna actually see if I have like a blue sharpie and maybe just touch up the edge of that just to get rid of the white um, but really nice looking race car. It feels really good in your hands. Um, definitely a lot of a lot of heft to it. A lot of die cast in there. No pun intended. Um, and just for a size comparison, do a quick size comparison. We'll bring in wheel jack just so you you can see how they how they match up. And uh, I I think uh, I think it's definitely the right size you know for the car of course the formula one cars are a lot longer than your normal race car so if here's a normal race car actually this is probably a little bit longer than standard race car too sphinx is just a little bit longer which i think is absolutely perfect here's his two weapons they do plug in on the side of sphinx there's a hole right there and a tab on the top of the gun that way you can tab it in same thing on the other side with his shoulder cannon and we're gonna get those out of the way real quick and we're also gonna get out the little guy right up top here and you just kinda wiggle and pull him out I would be cautious with this uh, just because it is clear and you can feel it flex a little bit so you just want to be gentle or ginger with it. One thing I will say before we get into the transformation on this guys, out of the box uh, these rubber wheels which are very nice, uh, they're, they're pretty soft um, they kind of came out of the package like that so all I had to do is just slide the wheel out on all four of these which gave it a little bit better of a look you can see there is some of the inside showing you can try to adjust that a little bit um, but I rather have the inside showing than the outside but these are very nice very nice wheels and uh, let's go ahead and get into the transformation on this guy so first thing we want to do is we're going to come down to the rear wheels and then we're just going to fling the rear wheels around. That way they're out of the back of the car just like that. Do the same thing on this side. And you can slide the legs down. Then you're going to come up to these panels on the side. And they will unclip. Just kind of lift these up. Just like that. And the whole arm got out of the way there, but normally it doesn't happen. So then you just pull that back down. And this panel right here, there's a little tab right there that'll go into that hole on the leg. That kind of fills this this in a little bit. Same thing on the other side. Just pop that out, slide that down make sure this panel comes around and then just peg that in then what I you can line up these panels if you push them all the way in they're gonna be tilted a little bit so you just want to line them up so they're straight and you can split the legs they tab in down at the down at the rear spoiler they're probably the most secure. That's the most secure area. Um, these little panels right here will flip down, kind of fill in the front of his, uh, the bottom of his leg. Same thing on this side. Just going to bring that down. Then these engine pieces, you can rotate them around. 
and they'll sit right on the leg just like so. They'll come up to the top of the figure. You're going to want to split this piece right here and bring it up and then the tabs on the inside right there are going to peg into the holes on the side right there. So rotate this around, bring this back down, and just peg those in. Just like so. Then the arms are on this sort of sliding joint. Then you want to flip these arm panels out. And that's going to allow you to swing this arm down. And then you have to pull down to extend the, uh, the elbow. Which also gives him a nice double jointed elbow. Same thing on this side. Just going to flip that panel out pull the arm, pull the arm down, and you want to make sure when you pull it down you're supporting it at the shoulder because these pegs are really thin. I think they're pegs. I can't get to them. And that's one of the problems with this figure is this arm, and you can see it better in robot mode, is loose right by that peg. So I, I can't figure out a way to get in there to tighten that. This one is actually tight. So that's one of those things your mileage may vary on that. It just happens that mine is a little bit loose. I'm not saying that yours is going to be. I don't know if that's a common problem or not. Then you can just flip out the hands. Same thing on this side. Flip the hands out. And then these panels, there's little grooves right on the inside of the arm, which is kind of hard to see but this panel will sit in that groove and that way if he has any wrist movement that panel will slide with the wrist. You can kind of see right there the little line where that where that little groove is. So now that you've got the arms out you can just take these panels and rotate them down. Then all we have to do is the top of the chest. And we're going to come up to the top here. First thing you want to do, pull these wheels up. They are also on a peg slider. Push these in, his little fins. And we're going to flip down this panel, which is going to be his chest. And then we're going to pull the wheels up and this little metal piece is going to slot into that hole right there. There is a lot of die cast in this figure again, uh, which you know gives it a really nice feel. And then before we flip this down, these little panels, these little gray panels have to flip out to allow you to fold it down. And then everything will fit real nicely inside of there. And then this is the this is the one part that's a little difficult. I like to just get that piece out of the way and then flip it out with your finger. Lock the chest in. You'll feel there's a little spot, a little peg right there. It's uh, die cast. And just clip it on there. And then the head, all you have to do is just give a little pull and the head will pop up. And then you can sit it down. There's a little notch on the head uh, right there that kind of sits on this groove right here. And that seems like where it should be. Uh, he kind of does have dead eyes. Eh, not too bad. They're, com they're On camera they're coming up actually a lot brighter than they are in person. Uh, which is surprising, but his head does have a good amount of rotation. You could do a full 360 if you wanted to, and then it can go back and forward, do the transformation, but he has, he can look down pretty far, he can look up a really decent amount, 
And then the only thing we have left to do on this figure is these side pieces, which should be down right now, they just clip in, which fills in the gap. So he's really nicely filled in on the side here. There's, there's really no extra space at all. And then you can see with the arm, this one is just a little bit wobbly, uh, more than I would have liked. And like I said, I just can't seem to get in there to tighten this at all, which is, which is sad, but it is what it is. And then, like I said, I don't think that's going to be a common problem. Then we just have to rotate the waist around. And there you have Sphinx in his, uh, in his robot mode. And again, it's, it's really nice. Uh, just absolutely amazing. Best mirage I've seen so far. This face is kind of sad. He's just not a very happy mirage. So I definitely will be rotating that out. Not with that one, because that's almost a pouty mirage too. I don't know why all these mirages are so sad. But this is, this is the best one, and it's just sad. This one has the most uh, paint defects on it. But he's kind of got a little smirk to him. Cause, you know, he's he's going invisible for, and then uh, reappearing and stuff, and getting to use uh, parachutes. And he's definitely the, he's definitely having a lot of fun. And then uh, just go over the hands, the hands. The bottom three fingers are on a single peg, and the top finger is also on that same peg, but it's uh, it's separated from these three fingers. And then the thumb is on this weird... It, it just rotates. That's all it does. It's not on a ball joint or anything. So, And it does have the slot in the hand right there. That way, if you want to plug the parachute in... Do it this way. Just plug that in his hand. And the same thing on this side. And there you have Mirage with his parachute. Kind of get that all in frame. You can see you could display them on the shelf like that and you could pose it, you know, however you want. He does have really nice range of motion in his arms. Just pop this out real quick. You can see the shoulders. They come all the way out at the shoulder and also underneath the shoulder they have the upper swivel on the arm they have the double jointed arms double double jointed elbows the hands are on a bolt or are all on a rotation mushroom cap and the waist does rotate the legs go out all the way to the side all the way back, got a double jointed knee, can go all the way forward, and he also does have a universal rotation up at the upper thigh. So, really nice movement out of this guy. He gets a really nice poses out of him. He stands excellent because of all the die cast. He has these little die cast heels here. These pieces on the inside of the leg, I believe, are die cast. Or the back of the leg. So he's got a lot of a lot of heft to him. I really like that. It makes it feel like a quality figure. And even though he's hefty, he still has a lot of range of movement, which is very impressive. Let's go ahead and uh just clip his weapons on. His shoulder cannon is on this little swivel with this gray clip right there. And what that's going to do is that's going to clip on right at the top. 
right there. And that'll give him his shoulder cannon. Unfortunately, because of the pieces on the back, if you want to have this up, pointed up a little bit further, you kind of have to slide slide that clip up. Just like so, and it kind of does interfere with his head movement. Um, but if you're fine with just having it sitting there straight, it's going to look it's going to look nice. And then here's his gun, which is just all silver. And everything pegs in his his hand really well. Uh it's not hard to peg him in and they you know, stay solid. I could pick him up by the gun. And he's not he's not going to let go or he's not going to drop and the gun doesn't move at all which a lot of figures when you put the gun in their hand it's really loose and I don't have that problem with him so the only problem I have is with that one shoulder being a little bit loose at that peg then it should be and I really think that's just on my copy I don't think that's going to be a common problem so let's go get go ahead and get him in for size comparison, and for size comparison, we're just going to bring in side swipe or Lambor, whatever you want to call them. Uh, and you can see they match up in robot mode very nicely. Here is the black iron hide in the background, just so you can see how they stack up. And again, I think uh, I think he fits in with your masterpiece collection very nicely. And uh, thank you guys for watching. Make sure you check uh, check this guy out on the Chosen Prime. I know he's available for order there or pre-order. Um, I'm not sure if he got those in yet or not. Um, again, really nice figure. I really recommend him. The best Mirage out there. And uh, this is the first video on my new ch channel. It's actually an old channel, but we're switching all the reviews over to my channel. Uh, but we're still keeping the RFC reviews, so please subscribe. Uh, I really need all the help I can get to get up to the numbers that some of the other reviewers are, so we can, uh, we can keep doing these reviews for you. Thank you, and uh, we'll see you next time. And after I stopped recording, I realized I didn't show him off next to um, Invisible from DX9, I believe is who did this one. And I really prefer the Ocular Max version or the MMC version compared to DX9. And I love DX9. They've been doing a lot of great things. Uh, but yeah, he just, no matter how much I try, I just can't get him to stand up right. And the back looks a little plain to me. It looks much better, I think, uh, on the back of on the back of Sphinx. So, it, you know, not as lazy, not as not lazy, but it just doesn't seem like a solid figure from behind like Sphinx does. So, if you're gonna pick up one of these guys, I would definitely recommend Sphinx over the DX9 Invisible. Alright, thank you guys and we'll see you next time.